Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Gao Panelungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Sonia Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, drop us a link in the comment section below, and we'll actually do it for you guys. You can check out our second YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0 where we post weekly vlogs and you guys can hit that subscribe and enjoy. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse and we have some amazing conversations which you guys don't want to miss. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, this channel or our second YouTube channel for the visual. We've got a Patreon account and you guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel. Thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, interacting with us. Everything that you guys are doing, uh, we're very, very grateful. So thank you. I hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed. So today I'm going to be reacting to why is Jew thanks God for Christian converting to Islam. Rabbi admits Muhammad is like Moses and not Jesus. Excited to see what this is about. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Alechem, my dear brothers and sisters. I just read on the news that a famous singer by the name of Synod O'Connor, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correct, has converted to Islam and she took the Shahada and you know she tweeted thanks to all her Muslim brothers and sisters and anyways I would like to give my reaction so first of all I haven't heard of the singer because you know I wasn't too much into music I guess into this type of music and uh, but uh, you know I, I asked uh, some people and she was famous and people know her and uh, she converted just now to Islam and this was just in the news and uh, my reaction is simply thank God now I know that some of my brothers Jewish brothers and sisters may think that this is what I'm saying sounds a bit crazy because you know she converted to Islam and as we all know we have this major political rift between the Jews and the Muslims, you know, especially when it comes to Israel. Uh, even not especially when it comes to Israel, probably only when it comes to Israel and Palestine. And the truth be told that, you know, the even though I, I don't like to say this, and probably many of you don't say this out loud, but I'm going to say it. The truth is that the majority of Jews and majority of Muslims are probably enemies to each other or they consider themselves enemies. But I would say that as Jews, this should not bother us. Our purpose as Jews is to promote God in this world. It's not to promote us as Jews. This is something which we have to realize. As Jews, it should not bother us whether people like us or not. If people hate us more, we're going to get more enemies. That's one thing. I think the most important thing for us is so that God has more friends. Our purpose in life as Jews, God chose us as a chosen nation to be a light unto the nation. A light for what? Not to pro promote us as a people, for people to love us. No, this was not the purpose. In fact, God told us people are going to hate you. The purpose of our uh, existence as a nation was to promote God, to sanctify God. And when a secular, especially famous secular, converts to Islam and accepts God and, and believes in God and follows the laws, many of them which are within the seven Noahide laws. I think this is exactly what Jews, as Jews, we are supposed to rejoice at. Because God has been um, sanctified when this happens. And, and therefore, as Jews, I think we should be happy. And yes, after she converted to Islam, she probably will obviously, you know, dislike Israel and maybe, you know, dislike Jews. Yes, could be. You know, it's possible. I'm not sure exactly, but it's possible. Probably even likely. But I think as Jews that you got to look in the big, bigger picture. And the big picture is that as long as God is promoted in this world, we should be happy. 
And even if those people turn against us, that's you know a different issue. God will not let anything happen to us. As long as but we are supposed to promote God. And I'll give you an example. You know, imagine a professor teaching his students, right? And some of the students succeed in what the professor was teaching them. And they become, you know, successful in let's say mathematics or whatever it may be. And even if the students eventually do not like the professor and criticize the professor or whatever, as long as he did his job and he sees that they are great mathematicians, he should be happy because he did his job. You know, whether they hate the professor, it's already their business. It's between them and God. You know, it's God will deal with that. But as long as he sees that they are successful in what he taught them, he should be happy. Please. Allah is taken from the name from Alaka. Alaka, which is, we use that word all the time. We have the same God as the Arabs. We believe in the same God, in one God. So it's a paradox. See, the Christians believe in the uh, Trinity, the, you know, the, the, whatever that's supposed to mean, but it's a part of it is their, their God, who's the JC, we call him. But uh, <laughs> that, so that's uh, not our belief at all. We, we're not allowed to believe in anything like that. But we have in common, we believe in the same God. Right? As a matter of fact, I was speaking once to Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, the greatest rabbi of our generation. He said, Allah, that's the Arab's, Arab's God, the same God that we have. He wasn't afraid to talk about it. They have the same God. Allah means God, the Alokat that we say, and uh, they believe in the one God who created the world. The Trinity is not presented as a description of God's actions, but rather the Trinity is presented as a description of God, a description of God's essence. It's presented as a, a an effort to explain to us who we are to worship. In Judaism, we are to worship one God. All of the attributes that are that are attributed to God are just to help us understand God's interaction with His creations. Another point to that is important to realize over here is that the concept of the Trinity only came up after Christians already accepted the deity of Jesus. It was an effort, a philosophical effort, to justify something they believed already, an absurdity they believed already. To believe a man is God, they had to come up with an idea of the Trinity. It wasn't that they first came up with an idea of the Trinity and that they said, oh, Jesus is the one that fits into the Trinity. Before Jesus came to the world, no one thought of the Trinity. So the Trinity is a, a, an excuse for idolatry. Where are you from? New York. Your mother Jewish? No. What's your religion? I, I'm technically a Christian. I want to ask you a question about the Christian religion. They say that a man was crucified 2,000 years ago, and they buried him, and he's going to come back to life. Right? Is that what they say? They say. Let's say that you saw that man, he came back to life, and he's walking down the street here. Would you say, there goes God? Maybe. I don't know. Sure. Sure. But he's a man. Can you explain that to me? I can't. But you'd call him God. Uh, yeah, I assume so. I assume so. Is that man that was crucified God? Yes. You pray to that man? Yes. You worship that man? Yes, of course. That's idolatry. Why don't Jews want to convert to Christianity? For 2,000 years, Christians have been trying to convert us, and we've refused. They've even expelled us from their countries if we didn't convert. They threatened to kill us if we wouldn't convert. But Jews did not want to convert to become Christians. Why? What's so wrong with their religion? They point into the Bible many places and say, you see, this is pointing to them. But what does the Bible really say? What is the main point of their religion? A Jewish man was killed, hanging on a cross, hanging on a pole. And because of his death, they believe their sins are forgiven. But what does the Torah say? The Torah clearly says, no man will die for another man's sins. The fathers will not die for the sins of the sons, and the sons will not die for the sins of the fathers. Every man will die for his own sin. The Torah says if a man is executed, he's to be hung on a pole. For everyone to see that he was executed. But before nightfall, his body must be taken down from that pole. Why? 
because a man hanging on a pole is a curse to God. This is what the Bible says. The very symbol of their religion is a symbol of a curse to God. Now do you see why Jews don't want to convert to their religion? First of all, I think that in, in a lot of ways, Islam shares more with Judaism than Christianity does. First of all, it's a, it's a, it's a, a religion of the transcendence of God. Right. It's a religion of law and commentary. Um, and, 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 I, and I have a theory for why that is, and Christianity isn't, why Judaism and Islam are, if you want to hear the theory. Sure, let's hear the okay, theory. Okay, here's my theory. My theory is that it's because Christianity grew up in the Roman Empire, so the laws were taken care of. But Moses and Muhammad had to create a people in the desert. Right. So you needed civil law as well as criminal law. Um, and the other thing I think that is, that is beautiful about Islam, although today in some ways very scary about Islam, is the enormous power that it has for large populations who one day know very little about it and yet the next day feel tremendous devotion to it. Something that can, some belief system that can do that is, you know, that, that's worth paying attention to on its own terms, not just from the outside. Islam and Judaism are very similar and, you know, um, we're not identical. I'm not claiming we're the same exact thing, but on the very critical issues, any Muslim who really sincerely studies Judaism really studies it, not propaganda on some dumb website. You know what I'm talking about. Because on the same dumb websites, you have the crazy websites say that Muslims are a bunch of suicide bombers that kill people. And I'm not even do these filthy dogs say this. So I'm not talking about the crazies, but the serious, serious people. One of the things that both Jews who study Islam or Muslims who study Judaism go, whoa, we're, we are, the, I mean, it's shocking how similar we are. We are not exactly the same. Let's get that clear, okay? And number two is just one caveat. You'll say, but what about Jesus? Islam believes Jesus was this a messenger. Jews don't believe. I want to say this to my Muslim brothers and sisters. The Jesus of Islam has nothing to do with the Jesus of Christianity, and don't conflate them. Christians believe that Jesus was God and they worship him, which you know is idolatry and an abomination, and they believe that he was crucified, and you know better than that. People do not die on a cross in six hours, and no one could die for anyone's sins, and the way that a person receives repentance is through mercy, not through the pagan human sacrifice. That's what's important to us. That's what matters. So when they say, oh, but you don't accept the message of Jesus, well, it, the, the, the Isa of Islam has nothing to do with the Jesus of Christianity. You go, what do you mean? He's born of a virgin, married. It's, those are the superficial trimmings. But the essential critical doctrine, I mean, is there in the Quran a more important central foundation of Islam that la ilah, there is no God but Allah. If you don't believe that, you're out, you're gone. Like, share, and subscribe to create awareness. We are also available on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and Pal Talk. Very interesting. Um, I thought the Muslims actually agreed with the Jesus from the Bible, although they just don't agree with the part where he was um, crucified and came back to life. But then that really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, what I'm admiring about these three religions is that there is one God above everyone else, above Jesus, above you, above me. There is one God, one, 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 one God. And then to the beginning of this, because it was talking about someone converting, the Christian lady that converted, is it, was she a priest or that was a stage name? I'm confused. I'm really confused. But then I like how someone from a different religion is saying, thank God, because someone 
has converted and they found God. That's what we should be looking at in this world. Let's not look at people and say, I am them and saying, oh, maybe she just wants this or maybe just judging them. At the end of the day, even if they're not converting to your religion, be Christianity, Islam, Judaism, you name it. As long as they find God, that's the beauty in in everything. Maybe they'll change, they'll com not change, convert someday. But as long as they found God, you and I should be happy for them. Let me know what you guys think. And a big shout out to the person that suggested this. This was very, very amazing. But then I think I asked in a certain video, and I think I asked about the Torah. Now I'm asking, uh, is anyone or does anyone have a video where... Um, um jews talk about um jesus what are their thoughts and is there a jesus in the bible why don't they No, he said they don't believe jesus was a messenger what do they think i really want to look at that video if you guys have any ideas drop them in the link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to watch and react to them um make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video